Today on the Shape It Up channel, we are talking about shin splints. What are they? How do you get them? And how do you avoid them? Stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to the Shape It Up channel. My name is Nicole. I am so happy that you are here. Each week I provide free videos that you can check out. They are perfect for women who are over 40 who are looking to get fit. The fitness tips that I offer are definitely actionable and you can apply them into your life today. So today we are talking about shin splints. If you're not familiar with shin splints, it's typically a pain that you have down the front of your shin, and you may or may not have some swelling in the lower part of your leg. A lot of times with shin splints, you may feel the pain while you're exercising, and then it may go away, or vice versa, you might be working out, and then you feel the tenderness in your shin later on. If it's really chronic and it's really flared up, you're gonna feel it all the time. If you do not treat shin splints, it is going to become chronic, make sure you get that checked by your doctor or physician. So what causes shin splints? Typically shin splints are caused by repetitive stress on the shin bone and the muscles around it. Second cause of shin splints might be tight calf muscles. You have to make sure that you stretch out your calf. Third cause of shin splints might be that you've just taken up running or you haven't run in a long time and you are going at a program that is too advanced for your body. Sometimes our minds are way ahead of what our body can actually do. So it's always best to start off a little bit slower and work your way up, especially if you're a woman over 40. We are not the same as we were in our 20s, so we have to be a little bit nicer to our bodies to make sure it lasts longer. <laughs> Fourth reason you may be getting shin splints is if you have bumped up the intensity of your workout. This is mainly impact type workouts that could be calisthenics, it could be HIIT training, could be Tabata, anything where you're providing impact on your body and you've just cranked it up a notch. Those can cause shin splints. Fifth reason you could get shin splints is working out on uneven terrain. So if you are a trail runner or if you like to work out outside, try to get as even terrain as you possibly can. Cement is probably the worst thing that you can work out on. So if you are one of those people who have an at-home gym downstairs in your basement, make sure you have some sort of mat or something that has some cushion to it above your cement floor so you are providing a little bit more cushion for that impact so you don't get shin splints. The sixth reason you might get shin splints is the structure of your feet. If you have a real flat arch or if you have a really high arch, a lot of times the impact on the foot will cause pain up through your shins. It's also depending on how you're landing through your foot. I recommend going to a podiatrist to get your foot looked at if you're having shin splints and they can recommend whether you need orthotics or a type of shoe that you may need. So here are the seven tips I have to avoid shin splints. Number one, we just talked about it. Hire a professional to analyze your gait. Your gait is how you walk or you run. You can absolutely go to a podiatrist, and I recommend that you do. <laughs> go to a podiatrist, have them look at your running gait, and they can give you recommendations, whether you need orthotics, what type of shoe. There are running companies that also offer this. I know in my area, we have a great running company, the Mulliga Hill Running Company. They offer a gait analysis as well, and then they'll recommend what shoe would fit best for your foot. The other thing a podiatrist can do is actually analyze your foot posture. I am going to have a video available for you to check out at the end of this video, and it will go through the structure and posturing of your ankle bone. And a, a lot of people roll in and roll out, so you can check that video out at the end of this video. You'll see a little eye up in the corner. I don't know which corner it'll be. <laughs> um, you'll see that little eye, just click on that and you can click on the video directly. Tip number two to avoid shin splints. Always make sure you warm up your calves and your shins before your workout. A lot of times we focus on the bigger muscles, which is important. You know, your, your leg, top of your legs, your thighs, your arms, your back, that kind of thing when you go to warm up. But you also have to make sure you're addressing your calves and your shins, especially if you're gonna go run or if you're gonna do some sort of impact workout. Tip number three to avoid shin splints. Make sure your workout program is designed for you. This is why I recommend hiring a certified professional 
personal trainer to design your program for you to make sure that you are getting something that's tailored for you. There are a lot of programs out there online, but they may not be the best one for you, especially if you're new or you're a beginner and you're starting to take up running or you're starting to work out again. If you're over 40, <laughs> sorry ladies, we are not the same as we were when we're in our 20s. I do recommend hiring a trainer. I'm not just saying that because I'm a trainer and I offer that service, but it is important to make sure that you're getting what you need for your results and to make sure you stay injury free. Tip number four, make sure you get the right sneaker for your foot. I don't know if they're still calling them sneakers nowadays. I know sometimes they call them kicks, <laughs> but um, if you're over 40, we call them sneakers. So <laughs> make sure you get a supportive pair of sneakers. There are many different styles and brands of sneakers that you can get. Sometimes they're good for your feet, sometimes they're not so good. I personally wear Asics. I love the brand. I've never had a problem with it. They work fabulously with my feet. Um, I also have orthotics, so again, it's, it's a good balance for me. I've tried different shoes. Um, some have been good, some have not so good, but Asics is the one that I like to go with. I'll leave the link down below and you can check out Asics if you like. I am not affiliated with Asics. I'm just sharing that with you because that is a product that I like. Tip number five on how to avoid shin splints. Consider arch support. You can absolutely go to the route of the podiatrist. If you have insurance that covers it, I highly recommend you take advantage of that and go see a podiatrist. I know a good podiatrist if you're in my area. His name is Lee Cohen, and I will also leave the link down below if you would like to check out his services. He's in Philly and in Cherry Hill. I'm not affiliated with the Dr. Cohen either. I have worked with him, he's a wonderful man. So just so you know, I'm not getting a kickback or anything for mentioning any of these suppliers or people. So, disclaimer aside. <laughs> so go to your podiatrist, get your feet evaluated. They again will do a gait analysis on you. They will check your foot, they'll take x-rays a lot of times. If you need orthotics, they're gonna take a molding of your foot. Totally worth it. Again, especially if you have insurance that covers it, I highly recommend you go that route. If you are looking for a kind of budget-friendly option, it might not be the best option, but you, you can get arch supports in the drugstore. Then again, it's not gonna be customized to your foot. That might be a starting point for you and see where you go. So if they work, go with the drugstore. If they don't, go see your local podiatrist. Tip number six on how to avoid shin splints. You have to have to have to stretch out your calves and your shins. I am gonna have another video available for you that goes over exercises that you can do to stretch out your calves and your shins. And you can check out that video at the end of this video by clicking the eye in the corner. I'll leave an arrow wherever it is. <laughs> and just click that at the end of the video and you'll be taken to that video. Last tip, tip number seven, how to avoid shin splints. Ladies, if you are over 40 or you're kind of close to 40 or if you're a brand new beginner, always, always, always start off slow and work your way up. I cannot stress enough that you need to be slow and steady in your progress and in your workouts. There are many programs out there that are, you know, 12 weeks and you're going to be in fabulous shape. Well, I got news for you. You may kill yourself to get there, but you're not going to stay there. So it's better to think of fitness as a lifelong lifestyle change that is a marathon, not a sprint and be nice to your body. So that is tip number seven. Make sure you start off nice and slow and you acclimate as you are ready. I hope you enjoyed the Shape It Up video. Don't click off yet. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That lets me know that you enjoyed the video and that I will continue to make more videos just like this. Please leave me a comment below if you have a comment on shin splints or a question on shin splints. You can get more fitness tips from Shape It Up by visiting shapeitupfitness.com. Remember to get fit, be fierce, and have no limits, and I will see you in the next Shape It Up video.